Let's discuss asthma. Asthma leads to increased airway reactivity, bronchoconstriction, obstruction, and in severe cases, respiratory failure. It primarily affects the small airways. Normal small airways are composed of a smooth muscle cell ring, mucosa, and mucus, which is produced by cells in the mucosa. Acute asthma is due to exposure to an environmental trigger, something like dust, animal dander, pollen, smoke, even exercise or respiratory infection. There are two immune response pathways that contribute to asthma symptoms. The first response is rapid and is due to mast cells that are found in the mucosa. Mast cells have IgE molecules on the surface. When these bind an antigen, like part of an allergen, the granules in the mast cell release histamine and pro-inflammatory substances. There is also a second delayed immune response. Helper T cells also bind the allergen and release pro-inflammatory cytokines that stimulate B cells to release more IgE and recruit both neutrophils and eosinophils to the mucosa. As these cells arrive, the mucosa becomes inflamed and further enlarged, which causes both increased airway reactivity and worsened obstruction. This second immune response peaks 4 to 12 hours after allergen exposure. Both the immediate mast cell response and the delayed immune response cause small airway changes. The smooth muscle layer becomes thickened and contracted due to bronchospasm. In the small airways, smooth muscle contraction is induced by histamine and leukotrienes binding to specific receptors on the cell membrane. When bound, a series of intracellular events occur, ultimately increasing calcium, which promotes contraction, or bronchospasm. Also note that the mucosa is enlarged and there is increased mucus. The small airways narrow, resulting in the characteristic wheezing and air trapping of asthma. The goal of asthma management is to relieve bronchoconstriction and prevent respiratory failure. Smooth muscle cells also have muscarinic receptors that bind acetylcholine, as well as beta-2 adrenergic receptors. The muscarinic receptors promote contraction, whereas the beta-adrenergic receptors promote relaxation. First-line therapy is typically a combination of an inhaled beta-2 agonist, like albuterol, and an inhaled muscarinic antagonist, like ipratropium. These work to counteract the effects of histamine and leukotrienes. Let's look back at the smooth muscle cell. There are beta-2 receptors, where albuterol binds, and acetylcholine receptors, where ipratropium binds. Albuterol leads to smooth muscle relaxation by decreasing intracellular calcium, and ipratropium prevents acetylcholine from binding, impairing smooth muscle contraction. The peak effect is within 15 to 30 minutes. Steroids are also routinely given. Steroids impair the helper T cell pathway with various anti-inflammatory effects and should be given early to block the delayed onset of this immune response. If unchecked, mucosal inflammation can create a vicious cycle where the mucosa becomes hypersensitized and repeated allergen exposure can result in severe asthma symptoms and potentially respiratory failure. The next step up is magnesium sulfate, which has several effects throughout the asthma pathways we've discussed. It promotes bronchodilation, presumably by acting as a calcium antagonist. It enhances the effects of your beta-2 agonists like albuterol. It impairs acetylcholine release, and it decreases histamine release. Finally, we have terbutaline. Terbutaline, like albuterol, is a selective beta-2 agonist, so it works on the same receptor. It has a worse side effect profile than albuterol, but can be a benefit because it is given IV, making it easier to achieve a therapeutic effect in the small airways. Untreated severe asthma leads to respiratory failure, and respiratory support should always be paired with medications. First line is oxygen. If patients are still in distress despite oxygen and medications, consider positive pressure ventilation or even intubation.